Welcome to another Nature Discovery Screencast. Look over my shoulder and watch as I look for the pure beauty found in nature from the raw videos taken on one of my photo walks. The date of this photo walk was April 6, 2017, and it took place in several locations around Cabarrus County, North Carolina, and that is in the United States. Today we're using Final Cut Pro X on a Mac. We will be screening the raw videos as our preliminary video production workflow. You can also watch our 30 Seconds of Nature screencast where we take selected raw footage and turn it into 30 second or longer videos to be used on the Nature's Wild Things website where we are building a visual nature field guide to life. started here today. What you're looking at are some black carpenter ants tending woolly adler aphids. And they're tending these aphids for the aphids honeydew. The aphids are a sap sucking insect that attach themselves and bore their little mouth parts down into this adler tree and uh, what comes out the other end is honeydew <laughs> and these uh, ants are collecting it as it's a primary uh, source of uh, nutrition and substance for uh, the ants so they actually uh, uh, tend and protect the little colony here of uh, Apids. Now you can see here again some of the uh, apids. They're really kind of cool looking. You can also just barely make out that there are little baby apids. Let me try to point out where. Here's, I, I think we can see them crawling around yeah there's there's one right over here crawling around and uh, in the, in this shot here you can see them right in here that there's some some babies there so the uh, woolly adlers had some babies all right let's jump right into it and uh, look at what we found on our photo walk uh, Let's see, we have a white-throated sparrow, sparrow here. Uh, windy day for our photo walk. This little guy was just uh, looking around as all, all these little sparrows do. This area is uh, uh, the overrulers of this area are the red-shouldered hawks and there are many around this area. So the uh, little birds know to be ever vigilant. It's a uh, nature's a, a world where it's eat or be eaten, and uh, these guys are always on the, the lookout for those. Uh, in this case, bigger creatures that could eat them. On this photo walk, I did find a little pile of feathers on the trail, so. Um, the uh, hawks are very active right now. And let's look at what else we have here today. We have a silver spotted uh, skipper. This one's just uh, kind of sitting in the grass sunning himself a little bit. Um, 
You can see the top side of his uh, wing there, a little bit of uh, gold uh, ornamentation on it. You just see the underside of his wing there. I think we have another clip in a second that uh, you can really see the other, the underside of his wing better. All right, what do we have here? We have our uh, green anole lizard. Uh, very frequently found in the uh, woods and uh, field edges, meadow edges around the, this part of North Carolina that I'm in. And uh, they're frequently found in the uh, spring, summertime. Uh, they're mainly out hunting all day long. They eat uh, any insect they can get a hold of. You guys just uh, impress me. They they can change the color of their skin very quickly within a minute or so to suit the, the camouflage pattern they need to be. Uh, just an impressive little reptile. And here we have our our uh, silver spotted skipper once again working a uh, flower. This time it's a purple dead nettle flower. These flowers are part of the mint family. And a uh, good little shot here of him taking that uh, flying leap off the flower there. Okay. I believe that's what we have for that clip. Now this is the time of the year when we start seeing the daisies and I believe these are ox-eye daisies. There's many different species around and uh, I've only started studying the plants and trying to figure out what they are. But uh, ox-eye daisy is, is what I'm putting my money on in this one here. <laughs> I often get corrected though with uh, the experts looking at my work and saying, no, that's one of these things. And uh, these daisies have the ever-present bugs on them. <laughs> I don't know what kind they are. haven't identified them yet. There seems to be beetles and flies here on this daisy. We'll be uh, keeping close track of these um, oxide daisies as they contain all sorts of wildlife uh, that we can kind of track over time and see what kind of uh, critters are are visiting uh, the daisies. Okay, my favorite fungus <laughs> this time of year. This is the uh, cedar apple rust fungus. Yes, I took a video of a object just sitting there doing nothing. <laughs> These tentacles that grow out of this brown ball uh, in the spring uh, as it rains these tentacles turn bright bright orange and grow and then over time these tentacles start drying up and shriveling up and give off the spores that uh, spread the fungus proximity to some apple trees is uh, part of the life cycle here. Uh, it's really an interesting uh, thing. If you're interested in this sort of thing, look up uh, cedar apple rust. All right, now the highlight of my nature walk, and it really showed uh, nature uh, in that uh, it is a uh, nature's <laughs> eat or be eaten world out there. And uh, uh, what we have here is a series of clips that uh, uh, just warn you here, this is uh, uh, the rough part of nature to watch sometimes. Uh, we have a beautiful here, uh, I believe it's an army worm moth. But I'm not sure. There seems to be debate among, amongst the moth groups as to what it actually is. Uh, a lot of times with moths, we get it into the 
proper uh, category and uh, call it a day. We, we don't really know sometimes uh, what these things are, but uh, I'm thinking it looks an awful lot like an army worm moth, but I'm probably wrong, <laughs> as I, I am many times with uh, identification. And uh, what caught my attention was this moth was on the ground kind of flopping around a little. And uh, I investigated and set up the camera and discovered this moth uh, having uh, two of the uh, black carpenter ants, I believe. Uh, one attached to each leg. They attached themselves to the surrounding leaves and shrubbery and they are proceeding to pull at this uh, moth and uh, yeah that's one of those life and death things and <laughs> if you, you look that one ant is really being whipped around here but he's hanging on to that leg for dear life and uh, I think the moth knows that uh, flight <laughs> Uh, get away from these guys is uh, what he's got to do but these ants are really hanging on to the the leaves around them okay I think we we just lost the one ant and now um, we have one ant hanging on to one leg right now but look at what transpired here there's two ants <laughs> on the ground and it's like they lost the grip and it's almost like they're in a ball fighting with each other <laughs> I don't know what that's about they're they're like going at each other maybe for they're mad at each other for losing the grip of the the leg I don't know but they're uh to me, it just looked like they were mad at each other. And uh, so that leaves us this uh, beautiful little moth and uh, one ant. And let's see what happens here. The moth is trying desperately to shake this ant. He's going up and over and around and through the, the local shrubbery to try to shake the ant. The ants he used in the shrubbery just to create a point to hang on with. But this moth is quite a bit bigger than this ant. But uh, let's see what happens. Camera going out of focus a little bit. little persistent ant is just uh, hanging on so the other ants are uh, trying to get uh, get into the act here again and grab a leg I guess oh, missed oh, now the moth was able to actually fly a, a little bit and not a minute too soon here come the reinforcement ants I didn't get too far the ants clung on to another leaf and now the moth is pulling the leaf and the ant along. That ant is just hanging on with one leg. Being followed there by that second ant. Just can't catch up. <laughs> yeah, there. Nope. Missed. Second ant missed again. All right, now we have to go to the next clip. These, this moth and the ant would go off frame a little bit or behind something and then I pick them up again as I can see them from my vantage point. I never did get a, a focus on that one. 
Uh, now he's. Uh, You'd think at some point the uh, moth is going to start getting tired here. You'd think at some point that little ant is going to lose his grasp on the leg, but uh, he seems to be hanging on and hanging on. behind uh, the branch here a little bit. You can see he's uh, still struggling. like it's still just that one very persistent ant there. I never thought about it before. I've been chasing butterflies and moths around for uh, and bees for for a year or so and uh, I never realized the pearl that they were in uh, <laughs> Every time they uh, lighted somewhere and rested a little bit, uh, I uh, had some butterfly video a little bit ago. And in the video, you can see a spider sneaking up on the butterfly and then jumping to try to catch the butterfly as the butterfly took off. And uh, I'm only starting to realize uh, what our very... Uh, tranquil, beautiful scenes sometimes are uh, not exactly a uh, safe environment for uh, even large uh, insects like these moths and butterflies that the uh, smaller insects of the world are out to get them. Learning a lot about nature in the last year or so. I'm learning that uh, a single ant can be very, very persistent and uh, does not want to give up the grip. Now this moth, I believe if it's the uh, army worm moth, is not exactly uh, our friend when it comes to crops. Uh, the uh, larva stage of the caterpillar can uh, mow through some uh, commercial crops in fields and they're considered a pest we want to use insecticides on or something sometimes. We want to get rid of them sometimes if they're enough of a pest and a nuisance in the fields, if they're eating enough of the vegetation and leaves. So in a way the, uh, the ants are actually uh, providing a service to the forest and the pastures uh, if we didn't check and control the caterpillars and the uh, the moths, uh, we wouldn't have <laughs> uh, we wouldn't have uh, the woods. Uh, they'd eat it all. They'd take over and eat it all. So everything in life has a uh, a balance to it. Uh, That ant is really just hanging on. And that moth is starting to get tired. Let's go on here. I never do catch a focus on this shot, I think, but uh, the moth went up the plan a little bit, and that uh, that ant is just hanging on and hanging on. Okay, now it looks like, uh, do we still have a hold of the leg, I guess? Yep. 
Now we've gone three, four feet away from where we started here uh, with the numerous ants trying to uh, grab a leg, you might say, on this moth. And uh, so this single ant is the only one around for the time being, but I'm sure the ant knows that uh, friends uh, can't be far behind and all we have to do is hold them still for a little bit and that ant has a hold of that vegetation with his hind legs and is not going to let go. The moth is getting quite a bit weaker. look ahead here it goes underneath the log can't really see what's going on let me start off here and yep now if he has the leg yet yeah it looks like he if he has the leg or the edge of the wing now Must look like the ant has uh, grabbed hold of the edge of the wing. Or the leg is just underneath the wing there. I can't quite tell. Almost looks like he's got the wing. He just got the wing. I think with the moth flopping around, that's not necessarily a good thing having the edge of the wing. Maybe uh, the moth has a chance yet here. Uh-oh. Here come the friends. So now we have at least two of the ants uh, yet the uh, second ant never seems to hang on long not like that first persistent ant that first ant is the one that still has them I think just uh, behind the branches and behind uh, the leaves here he just uh, I think he's kind of trapped now the ants have the advantage I think they don't have him out in the open where he can fly and there seems to be at least the two ants down there yet all right let's go on here okay now we've got the uh, the tribe showing up and we have uh, ants grabbing every witch leg and pouncing on them here. So I think in this case the ants have won although the uh, insect is huge compared to the size of these ants. The uh, persistence of one ant in this case is going to provide uh, food I believe back in the nest for uh, part of the colony and uh, doing a little research on these ants the amount of uh, I don't know the way the research put it live meat that uh, these ants devour over the course of uh, time over the course of time in a year or so in the woods is more than all the other animals and uh, 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 all the other critters that eat other critters out there uh, just it it's the ants consume more weight in uh, these other bigger insects and critters than uh, than the big uh, you know predators consume just amazes me 
Now well, let's take a look here. We just uh, the ants have one and are trying to drag them off. And uh, it's all underneath the shrubs. And I think this kind of tells the story here. Um, it's a solitary ant going back to its nest with a little piece of moth in his mouth. I think that scene there is going to be uh, played uh, over and over again a thousand times in the next uh, few minutes here in this little drama that just took place in the in the woods. So there we have a snippet of uh, nature and uh, what nature's all about. In this case it's the uh, smaller creatures of the world taking over and uh, controlling the bigger creatures of the world. Now in the same very spot we have uh, these greater bee flies uh, flying around and landing and resting and flying around and protecting their territory and looking for mates and these bee flies will fly right up to a flower and in, uh, insert that long straw that they have attached to the front of their face there right into the flower and they actually are uh, working on that flower without landing on the flower most of the time they're flying those wings are just uh, beating 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 but uh, every time I do a shot like this now I'm going to re be reminded that uh, every time they're sitting on the leaf litter on the floor every time a butterfly is around or uh, something else there's there's always predators lurking about them and here you can see underneath the leaf right underneath them is a black ant kind of uh, realizing I think that we have a uh, potential meal up above us here and he emerges <laughs> and the bee immediately takes off but kind of hovers around and uh, flies a little bit and gets out of dodge. So uh, I never realized uh, how many predators were around for these beautiful little butterflies and bees that uh, I film all the time. And uh, here we have uh, an eastern uh, comma butterfly. I believe that's what it is. Although there's uh, many uh, there's many butterflies here that are very similar. So I'm assuming this is the eastern comma. And uh, even on this uh, beautiful butterfly, just uh, sitting here sunning himself a little bit. Um, I noticed when I was looking at this uh, video clip that there's also a little ant kind of uh, wandering around underneath them. I wonder if they have a size limit of what they go after. He doesn't seem to be too excited about going after this very big butterfly that's probably four or five times bigger than that moth was. But uh, very beautiful little butterfly here. I believe uh, we have another Nature Discovery uh, screencast in the can.